Hey, it's me, MLB. It's a, it's a happy, sad moment here. Here is chapter 154, the final chapter of Gains, and this one is titled Much Gained. Finally, you saw her car approaching and smiled brightly, waving at her to get her to pull into the driveway that was closest to you. She slowed and followed your hand signals, and you ushered her into the drive and then gestured for any of the empty parking spaces that lay beyond for her to park in. She found a spot and pulled into it, and then turned the car off and you walked over to her. Her car door popped open and out she bustled, looking lovely in her pink dress that had little white flowers on it. It was such a lovely shade of pink on her that you had to stop for a second to admire her. Mum, you look amazing, you gasped. I love that dress, is it new? Yes, actually, she said with a little bobble of her body and then wrapped her arms around you. I bought this with a certain somebody in mind and I hope he likes it, she giggled. You mean fat gum, right? You asked with a sly smile as you pulled back from the hug. Oh, he's just so sweet, she gushed. He's a big, cuddly, sweet bear. He really is a nice person, I agree, you said with another hug to her. But come on, I want you to meet all of the class and teachers and everyone, you said brightly. She bubbled and bustled a little and got her bag from the car and then closed the door and followed you across to the hall. There were already a fair number of people inside and you could hear chatting and laughter as you approached the entrance. Just as you stepped in, Momo was about to come out and you stopped her for a second to make introductions. You Momo, this is my mum, you said politely to the well-dressed classmate. Oh, Mrs. Lynn, it's a pleasure to meet you. My, you look very dressed up today. Very beautiful, she gushed. You grinned from ear to ear. Momo couldn't have said a nicer thing to your mum, and when you looked at your mum, you could tell that this had been something that she appreciated. Oh, why aren't you just the sweetest? Your mum bubbled. What lovely classmates you have, my beautiful girl. Oh, Momo, can I give you a hug? Your mum asked, just completely overtaken with joy at that point. You watched your dear classmate Momo disappear into the bosom of your mum, giggling internally to yourself about how your mum spoiled everyone up, like what happened with Fat Gum and the Fat Taxi, and you thought about how perfectly suited he and your mum were. After Momo resurfaced, she excused herself to go and meet her parents, and you said you were about to take mum inside to meet the others. Most of your classmates were there, and you went around showing her off to them all and giving her a chance to put faces to names. Since you talked so much about all of them, she already knew their names, but just didn't know what they looked like. Lastly was Aizawa, and you finally got her to meet him, smiling as she gushed over how good a teacher he was and how well you had been doing in his care. You know, a very competent student. I'm happy that she's realised her potential in this course, he said diplomatically. Obviously, we all have the capacity to improve, but she's well on her way to becoming a great hero. Your mum was just so overjoyed she nearly smiled herself right through the roof, but before she could get too far ahead of herself, Karishima arrived and jumped in to save Aizawa from another all-encompassing hug. Hi, Mrs. Lin, he said brightly. Oh, my sweet Karishima, she bubbled, grabbing him into a hug instead of Aizawa. He disappeared into her chest and he had to stifle your giggle once he'd resurfaced because he looked like he'd been attacked. Both cheeks looked pinker and more squished than usual. Hey. You heard the surly voice of your more stoic boyfriend call and turned to see him step over for his turn to say hello. Oh, my back you go, your mum gushed, grabbing him into a hug the second that she let Kiri go. Hugs for everyone, you chuckled. Who's getting hugs? The voice of Fat Gum asked and you turned around to see him standing behind you. Oh, your mum said with surprise, letting back you go go so that she could turn to the round hero. You look lovely, miss, Fat Gum said politely, but with a little twinkle in his eye. That dress looks very beautiful on you. Oh, Toshiro, she gushed quietly, and you looked at her in surprise. Oh, I see we're comfortable with first names now, you thought smugly. You greeted Fat Gum politely, and then stepped away with your boys to chat to them while your mum spoke with Fat Gum, and the conversation turned to them both dressed up in their suits. Don't you boys look lovely, you complimented them, and matching? Yeah, I got them for us, Kiri said brightly. Kaski looks so manly in his. You both look manly in them, you said with a smile. And you're still showing off too much, Bakugo grunted. I'm completely covered, you said with surprise, looking down the front of your outfit. Still shows too much, he grunted. Well, I'll be fine. I have you and E and myself to defend myself if anything happens, you chuckled, because I can stand up for myself now. And you've come such a long way, Kiri said brightly. I really have, he replied with a smile. And it's thanks to you both and being in this course and being with everyone here, I've gained a lot. I've gained health, I've gained happiness, I've gained self-worth, I've gained two beautiful boys who are always going to be there for me 
and they're for each other too. You added. We've all gained a lot, Kiri said, giving back your small, shy smile. Yeah, you've all gained me being in your lives. That's all that matters, he said confidently, and you chuckled. <laughs> you never change, Kat. Just then your attention was drawn to the front of the stage where Izawa was tapping on the mic to get everyone's attention. Let's get this done quickly so we can all go home, he said, and you all sweat dropped. It's been a big start to the year, but we made it. Please give yourselves a big round of applause, he added. Everyone clapped and you stepped in between your two boys and reached out and squeezed Kiri's hand and then back of yours, holding them for a bit before letting go. While Aizawa said a few more words, you felt Kiri reach behind you to squeeze Bakugo's hand and you smiled. From the very back of the room, Midnight suddenly started smacking present Mike on the arm as the loud blonde was standing beside her. That's it! That's it! They're all in a relationship together! I just saw it! They were all holding hands! I knew it! You owe me $50! She whispered harshly to the confused, spiky-haired blonde. Wait, what? We never bet on anything. And what's this about anyway? He asked with confusion. Who's in a poly relationship? Krishma, Yin and Bakugo, she said in a hushed voice. What a trio. And there you have it. That is a wrap. There is the end of Gains. You've all been so patient. It's been such a long time. The completed book will be up shortly. As you can well imagine, it is a very long book. So I've had to break it into a few different parts so that YouTube will accept it being uploaded. I think each part is probably about six to eight hours and there's two or three parts. I don't know. Still working on it. But it will be up later today, as well as the first chapter of the next book. A few of you might be familiar with it. It is Chance Ball. Uh, <laughs> it's a, that's a bit of a book. Those that have read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's actually a Darby X female listener, but Darby is it's all set in the high Q world. So it's a crossover between the two. Darby's actually the captain of the Nakoma team and Kuro is under him. So more will be explained as that story rolls on, but I will see you hopefully in the first chapter of that book. Thank you again so much for listening to Gains. Those have stuck with me from beginning to end. What a ride, hey? And uh, thank you all again. I'll see you in the next book.